it's funny with cooking, man, I feel like it kind of really opens up the deeper parts of my soul as far as what I love and enjoy about the tool of cooking. And that's more so building with people, building community, building fellowship. Um, you know, strangers go from being strangers to friends. People become uh, disarmed. You know, I'm a natural, gregarious person, but I feel like food kind of really helps me communicate what I'm feeling at that moment. Camp Yoshi is an outdoor adventure company. We focus on black folks. I mean, the goal is to get them outside to show them places they never knew existed. One of the things we really push for our trips is keeping morale really high. How do you keep morale high? Amazing food. I think short rib that's braised over some grits tastes even better after a long hike. That's just me, you know? I began cooking to impress my girl, now my wife. So cooking kind of became a natural labor of love. And it went from being a labor of love to being something I actually fell in love with. I mean, there's no secret weapon here. I think for us, taking these weekend escapes is us to kind of turn off the phones, off the TVs, having some alone time, recharge our batteries. Disconnect so you can reconnect, you know? Living in New York City, came out here for a job opportunity for my wife. Um, knew nothing about Oregon. I love it out here, man. It's special. It's powerful. It's helped me kind of just redefine who I wanted to be and who I am. And I'm thankful. Food's such a big cultural element of who I am, my background, my family. I mean, obviously, I'm a black man coming from the South, so when it comes to cooking and food, it's a lot of tradition there. Black Futures Farm, man. You know, when it comes to food justice, food security, knowing where your food comes from, it really ever is a person who looks like us. Uh, so I have a black and brown face doing it at a high level. I think that's powerful, man. Outdoor spaces, natural spaces, it, it kind of speaks to our soul, you know? Back. back, and then you can take sharp in your knife. Yeah, beneath the swell. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that! Yeah! Bada bing, bada boom. There you go, Perlene and James would be proud. <laughs> All I'm doing is pulling it back gently. And slice. One, two, three. Good job, Zora! Two hands. Reach. Get it, get it. Well oh, done. How do you feel? You feel like a farmer? You feel proud? You feel independent? You feel sovereign? I'm gonna be so proud. You gonna put it in a basket? Okay, you gotta hold your two hands. You got it? Nicely done, Zora. Give yourself an applause, man. Well done. High five. Okay, good job. Ooh. All right. So things that don't do so well in the cold will be good out here. Yeah, wow. So we'll be able to grow in here till probably like November, like yeah. November, because it'll be warmer. I'm not gonna play, you should have been my science teacher in high school, man. Like, <laughs> I was a teacher. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the reason how I ended up here is because I just kept losing my students, man. Like this violent shit and us is, yeah. Yeah. didn't feel like I was making the kind of contribution I wanted to make or mm. could make. Mm. Um, and then I was just also healing. I had been in rehab, so I was yeah, yeah. still really spiritually healing. Right, right, right. Um, and started to like work the soil with Art and Shantae at Mudbone. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my spirit started to heal. I was like, oh, this yeah. is what I should be doing. Yeah. Also like working in the soil um, was automatically like building and growing community. Like people want to be doing this together. Mm -hmm. So we started doing it in community and yeah. more and more people started to come and it was just a really natural vibe. Yeah, um, that's, yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like it's where things are going with us in our community. It's mm -hmm. just folks are looking for more natural spaces to kind of just be, just exist and thrive. Yeah. When black people are, are healthy, we're excellent. Yeah. You know, yeah. when black people are like allowed to be whole. Yeah. We are excellent. 
Like we are working to make our community more independent yeah. and more self-sufficient and more interdependent and working with each other, which is hard. I mean, yeah, it's hard it to work tough. with people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a great gift. It's a great blessing to be in the mix and to be in the midst of this and doing this work. I love it. I mean, it's just great. This is the new church, man. This yeah. is, um, and it's so quiet out here. It's quiet. It's peaceful. Yeah. Uh, For Camp Yoshi, we're trying to demystify what it means to get outside at a high level for black and brown folks. That's the most exciting part. (laughs) Woo, it's a big wave. We do get some red variety, canary rockfish, yellow eye rockfish. Yeah. That are red, they look like a snapper. So right, right, right. That right. sells better at the grocery store. No, of course. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. I see you. I see you. I see you. Oh, oh, look at that, my man, Grant. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Black rockfish. Oh, fish. beautiful. Can I hold it? Yeah, of course. Beautiful, like man. Bass. Yeah. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Grant. Yeah. Well done. Oh, Good beautiful, fit. man. Beautiful Good fish. Fit. Father, be proud. <laughs> Yeah, the day was special, man. Just kind of hanging out, not too far from the beach line, you know, casting and plucking. This is cool, man. It's cool to kind of hear people from different regions live off certain, you know, whatever's in the land that they're in, you know? And it's just second nature to them. It's not like... It's not a some, novelty. It, no, it's not. It's just like, yeah, this is where we are. This is what we do. Yeah. It's a good to go over here. Uh, Grant, this is amazing, man. Like, I, dude, this is... My cup is so full right now as far as just energy. Thank you, man. I don't think we still see these spaces as a safe space for us. I think we still see it as a threat. There's a legacy there of trauma, negativity, pain, suffering. Having a Black-owned adventure company that is manifested, executed, mapped out by black folks, I think has a lot to do with us trying to have our own independence towards trying to solve our own issues. It's important for us to kind of start seizing our own destinies. It's our narrative to write as far as what the outdoors looks like. fishing yesterday in Pacific City. I'm from the Carolinas, so typically low country boils, frogmore stew, Gullah Geechee styles, what we know. Uh, we finished it off with this amazing lime, chive, black creatures farm, just produce, so it's delicious. You know, you guys had a tough year, man. We all need to eat well, right? <laughs> this is our homecoming, so eat up, enjoy. It's really, really hot, so again, pass it to your neighbor, let them scoop it out for you, let them take the risk. Let your neighbor take the risk, <laughs> all right, not you. I feel like Camp Yoshi's a homecoming. I feel like there's a, a deeper connection with getting outdoors that speaks to the black narrative, because that's our ancestry. That's our gumbo. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's right